Um, outstanding introductions. I was worried what he was going to share. Um, <laughs> there's an awful lot of things, and I'm actually going to just ask Sandy for a clicker. I realized I haven't uh, got that. Somebody from Biz, if we can get a... A clicker? Brilliant, thanks. Um, so we're really excited to be here. In fact, in um, ATD 2014, I watched Carol on stage um, presenting Exonify, and I thought, one day I'm going to be able to go on stage with her. It's not quite a stage, <laughs> but let's just pretend right now that it's a stage. Thanks, Bev. Um, and um, so I'm super excited to present alongside Carol. And what's interesting for us both today is we're not presenting anything we're totally familiar with. We're presenting the latest Bursin um, Deloitte's report. So we're both using excuses that we're going to have our notes because it's rammed, packed, full of statistics and we want to make sure that we get things right. Um, first of all, let me just ask, how many of you have read the latest Bursin report? Okay, well done you. You have to make sure that you're on certain teams. Look for the people who had their hands up. They might be able to help you a little bit later on. How many of you have heard of it? <coughs> a okay, little bit better, all right? What I'm hoping by the end of this presentation today, not only will you actually read it, and we're very happy to send you an electronic version um, of the report, but that you'd like to participate in it next year. It's free. How many of you actually participated in this year's? Fantastic, thanks, Emirates MBD. You've always got your hands up. Um, so for me, we really wanna drive more participation from the Middle East because we don't have a great voice. We have a 2% voice in this global survey right now. Um, and, but we have double the number of companies that participated. So we really want to keep that trend going. It doesn't cost very much. It's not terribly long to fill out. It's pretty quick. And so it really is just a case. We'll send the link out to you. We just need you guys to actively participate, represent your companies, and we'll have a bigger voice um, from the Middle East. So um, I actually was very lucky to have the VP of Worldwide Sales from Deloitte actually present this to me in ISA in March, a lady called Kether. She gave us permission to use these slides, and we will share a deck, uh, a PDF version of these slides with you afterwards, so you can take them back out to your organizations, okay? So here's one of the things the Bursin Deloitte's report kind of like highlighted, um, is the fact that technology change is moving at a really fast rate, yeah? And we perceive that, the, or the, the kind of like we're aware that there's a very big gap between where technology is and how our businesses are keeping up with technology. Fair? Does that recognize that in that? You know, it's way up here. And in fact, it's even moving faster than Moore's law. In many instances with the technology, we're not keeping up. But in reality, what they found through the survey is businesses might not be keeping up, and certainly public policy is not keeping up. But individuals, our team members, are actually faster than the business. And so as learning and development, um, as HR, we're often way slower in bringing on board technology than our team members and colleagues are ready for, okay? We're resisting, we're hesitant, they're already out there finding it on YouTube. Um, they've already learned something through the internet when we're worried, are they gonna actually be able to find this using this device? They're ahead of us. And so as HR professionals, we have a responsibility to try and bridge that gap, to get a little bit faster, to get our businesses to move a little bit faster. And a lot of what the, the Burson report this year is rewriting the rules of the digital age. Every single component of the 10 trends they've identified keeps coming back to how are you going to leverage technology to do this? Because if you don't, you aren't going to be scalable. You aren't going to be able to afford it. No matter how big your business is or how small your business is, you're going to have to start embracing um, the digital age and technology. Um, in fact, one of the things she said is, you know, when they put the, uh, NASA had the man on the moon plan and they had these massive computers, these days in our phones we have the same level of capability as NASA had in the 1960s, yet we still don't leverage it completely. Completely. Um, 10,000 people, um, companies kind of like HR leaders and businesses were involved in this survey. Only 77 companies from um, the UAE and, and the Middle East, effectively. Um, that is double. It was 35 companies last year. Um, so again, we'd like to see that. 140, we can actually make a difference in this room if we all do it um, the following year. So it is a good report, though. And for those, how many of you have got regions you're covering outside of the Middle East? in this room, okay? So also the report breaks down by territory, kind of like by big areas of the, uh, of the world. So you can even have a look and see if there are any differences in trends 
as you go through the parts of your business. Um, so, in true biz style, why should we do all the work when all of you are here in the room? So we're going to get you to assess what you think. And for those people that have read the report, hopefully you haven't got a sly copy in your back pocket to be able to do this. Here are the actual trends from 2016 in order. Okay, and they're the global order. What we're going to get you to do now is to work in smaller groups and we're going to give you a little sort card exercise. We want you to estimate from those cards what's the global order of the 2017 report and what's the Middle East order of the 2017 report, okay? Um, we're going to give you a little pack of cards. You've got the answers on the cards. It's just about ranking what order they should be in. And for those people that are quick and you aren't still fighting about, I think this is number four and this is number five, um, if you get in the 15 minutes a little bit of extra time, we'd like you to have a little conversation about A, the difference between global and Middle East. Do you agree with it? B, the shift in the topic headings. So a lot of them are similar, but there's been evolution. You'll see from the cards. Okay, understand what that means. That's a slight move from 2016 to how they've categorized it in 2017. Should make sense when you get the card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you into, how many people have we got in the room roughly? 50? Okay. So I'm going to put you at the moment into, um, I think let's do six teams. Okay. So let's get our alphabet right. <laughs> Amazing, brilliant, charming, delightful, energetic, thank you, fabulous. <laughs> Okay, so amazing, um, brilliant, charming, charming delightful. delightful, energetic, fabulous. fabulous. Okay, amazing, amazing, delightful. Uh, amazing. Delightful. No. Brilliant. Brilliant. brilliant, A B, brilliant. A B, A, B. brilliant, <laughs> charming, <laughs> delightful, <laughs> energetic, <laughs> fabulous. Fabulous. Okay. You with me? Amazing. amazing. Uh, brilliant, brilliant charming, charming energetic, energetic, fabulous, <laughs> amazing, brilliant, charming, charming delightful, energetic, fabulous, amazing, brilliant, fantastic, we're getting there. <laughs> amazing. No, charming, you're charming. Amazing. Brilliant. You're going to come into another team. I'm just doing delightful, delightful. Energetic. energetic, fabulous, amazing. amazing. Our guests, anybody I haven't done from guests? No, you're all there. Bizzers, please just mix yourself around and be with different groups. So we're going to have the amazing group are going to be on Bev's door. Okay, the brilliant group will be just around the corner. Over on the far side, we've got Charming. Um, next to Basil, hopefully, if we can move, move this a little bit here. Okay, we've got Delilah, really grab a seat. So, how hard was that? Fairly hard? Yeah? Inter we heard some really interesting conversations. What stood out for you? What were, what were some of the l lessons learned before you even know the, the final order? <laughs> Ah, okay, the fact that the heading culture was, had, no was no longer there. Interesting, yeah, okay, that was interesting. What other insights? Is that better to see the screen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. What other insights? Um, for me, uh, I took uh, my company as a benchmark, so whatever we are doing, so... So it's hard. So in those groups, you've all got a different order that's important to you, yeah? yeah. yeah? So what I'm going to encourage you, one of the things that you can do with the Bursin report and with this kind of exercise is to go back to your L&D or your HR team and actually make a, you know, a fourth column. What is it that we're focusing on? What do we need to fix once you understand each of the components and how does that work for us and how does that help us shape our priorities for 2017 and going into 2018? Um, at least it's a dialogue and a conversation that helps you, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so are we really managing to, that's a great insight, are we managing today's problems 
in HR and learning? Or are we thinking about what's going to happen three, five, ten years down the road? And what I love about the Burson report and our contribution towards it is it gives us insight perhaps in what's happening in North America, in Europe, perhaps in some of the more progressive parts of the world where HR has gone a couple of steps ahead. So it gives us a crystal ball on what we should be working on now because we know it's going to come in you know, three years' time. And I like the fact that we get that added advantage here that perhaps they're going to be a little bit of ahead of us and we need to kind of like create a map that gets us there. So would you like to see the real results? Okay, so in reverse order, like in a good competition. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how, why this is going that way, but can you all see it? I have tried to move it, but it's just gravitating to the people over here. Um, so at the bottom of the list, coming in 10, was workforce management in 2017, 16, and the augmented workforce. So AI and how all of that is going to influence us came in right at the bottom. I thought it coming up a little bit higher. I think it's, I'll show you the actual percentages in a moment. Um, in at nine, actually, was diversity and inclusion. Now, again, that might be a big difference for us in this part of the world because it might be something we're having to tackle more than they are in other parts of the world. But that came in at number nine, both from the Middle East results as well. So, but again, remember, we're a small uh, 77 company influence, so maybe it's not huge. In at eight, people analytics and digital HR. Slight difference between global and Middle East. In at seven, okay, um, digital HR globally, and this thing called employee experience. And employee experience, I'll tell you some more information a bit later on, is culture and engagement rolled into one. Okay? So it's actually talking about the entire employee experience from the point that they found you online to maybe get a job to see whether they're interested right the way through their life and journey. And in fact, what they say about employee experience is it's at the core of everything to do with the new digital age. Okay? Um, you'll see it's higher up the list globally. So again, it's interesting in our part of the world how it hasn't gone there. Okay? Six, leadership for global, people analytics, and the data, um, which was down here in global for the Middle East. So using that data correctly. Top five, global performance management, Middle East leadership. Four, employee experience, for global, so they, that culture and engagement piece, they've put it in that much higher. Careers and learning actually coming in at number four for the Middle East. And you notice there's a subtle shift from learning to careers and learning. And basically it's actually saying it's no longer that we can just look at learning in isolation. Carol's going to speak a little bit more about this. It's about the whole career and learning experience and growth. In at number three, talent acquisition, finding the right talent both Middle East and global, coming in at number three. Number two, globally says careers and learning. Middle East says the organization of the future. And that's organization structure. At number one, global organization of the future. <laughs> and Middle East performance management. Okay, that old one coming back round. And so I, we're going to talk probably literally about the top six global trends in our presentation today, just to give you a few more insights and actually hopefully whet your appetite for reading the full Burson report. Um, just by, with that, what are your thoughts? Seeing the correct answer. Oh, by the way, as a nice little biz giveaway, so you can put this on your desks, we have given you... We'll, you'll all go home with a copy of this, so you can actually start to have a little look. But you can take photos if you like <laughs> from that perspective. Okay, so yeah, really interesting that we've got performance management way up there. And I, I don't think there's a solution yet globally to really solve that performance management issue. So that's a, an interesting one for us all to, to figure out together. Okay, so here are the actual stats. And... Um, You'll notice from the numbers there, and these are very clearly in the reporting again, that the top three globally were very close. 88, 83, 81% of people saying this was extremely important to them. And the next three are very close. So in fairness for your exercise, if you had the top six correct, 
or the top three and the next three, you've probably done really, really well because they were very, very close in percentage to separate. Um, and then you kind of like, we go on a sliding scale all the way down here to robo robotics and AI, et cetera. Um, Middle East-wise, same thing. Top three, very close, all in the uh, early 80s. Next three, actual e equal. Careers and learning, people analytics and leadership, all at 78% of importance. And then we head down um, the scale, okay? So you did really well if you got the top six as the top six. Okay, so let me introduce the first one, organization of the future. Then I'm gonna hand over to Carol for a little bit uh, more on this. So this is all about organization structure because businesses don't operate the same way they used to. Yet as organizations, we're still structured the same way we used to be. Maybe we're a little flatter, but perhaps we're still in a traditional organization structure. And what people are saying is that 89% of organizations do not know how to redesign their business structure, their organization structure, in order to meet today's requirements from customers, from employees, from whatever. They don't know how to do it. There isn't a, there isn't a blueprint for us to follow. 94% um, say that um, agility is key and being agile is key, but only 6% of organizations think they've got that right. They've got this flexibility to actually work perhaps in agile teams. Um, so what we're looking at is saying that this is how things were. And if I were being honest, that organization structure is this is how things are in the Middle East, yeah? We're still there. And in fact, we're still probably too hierarchical with too many levels. Yet the organization of the future has to move into a series of agile teams. And our cultures in this part of the world, I certainly think, or I believe, still don't allow for that agile flexibility of you borrowing a person from here. Who are they reporting to? And how will I know they're doing a good job? And all of those concerns that we have in this part of the world are holding us back from perhaps creating a more agile organization. This is how ultimately things need to work with this series of agile teams so that we're not, we need to move from more efficient to more speed, agility, and adaptability. It's no longer just about having an efficient organization. And they need to be more team-centric, centric, which changes the way we lead, because maybe not everybody reports to you that's on your team. And how do you get fast at team leadership and team dynamics when they aren't your reportees? And how do you keep on top of what they're doing when they go back then to maybe their core team? So a load of changes. Um, we need to become easier to do business with. Um, simplification of work processes. Um, and train for resilience and build in accountability. My big question to you is how do we go from here and kind of like leapfrog to this new way of working without kind of like having to go through a whole load of processes that perhaps other organizations in other parts of the world have already done. How do we, how do we jump to the next level? So big question on organization stu structure is about being designed for the way that customers will buy from you, the way that employees want to work, particularly millennials, the way that innovation needs to happen, and that changes actually the how, how we structure our businesses. Make sense? So everybody's grappling with that as the number one problem. Um, around what's going on. Um, number two on our list was careers and learning. So I'm going to hand over, and I've actually got to hand over the mic as well for the recording piece. Um, 